When you come to Normandy, one of the most popular and, and most visited spots is the one where I am right now. Uh, this is Point du Hoc, where on June 6th of 1944, Rudder's Rangers, uh, the companies of D, E, and F of the 2nd Ranger Battalion, ascended these cliffs to take out a battery of German guns that was thought to be uh, up here on this point between Omaha and Utah Beach. We've done a video here before that I'm going to link in the description. But today, we've brought something back here to the point that uh, is connected with a guy who was right here on D-Day. At dawn on the morning of the 6th of June, 1944, 225 rangers jumped off the British landing craft and ran to the bottom of these cliffs. Their mission was one of the most difficult and daring of the invasion, to climb these sheer and desolate cliffs and take out the enemy guns. The Allies had been told that some of the mightiest of these guns were here, and they would be trained on the beaches to stop the Allied advance. The rangers looked up and saw the enemy soldiers at the edge of the cliffs shooting down at them with machine guns and throwing grenades. And the American rangers began to climb. They shot rope ladders over the face of these cliffs and began to pull themselves up. When one ranger fell, another would take his place. When one rope was cut, a ranger would grab another and begin his climb again. They climbed, shot back, and held their footing. Soon, one by one, the rangers pulled themselves over the top, and in seizing the firm land at the top of these cliffs, they began to seize back the continent of Europe. 225 came here. After two days of fighting, only 90 could still bear arms. And behind me is a memorial that symbolizes the ranger daggers that were thrust into the top of these cliffs. And before me are the men who put them there. These are the boys of Point de Hope. All right, so I uh, wanted to show one of the bunkers here at Point de Hawk. And uh, also, this isn't going to be a, a deep dive into the operations here on D-Day. This is more about the artifact that we brought along with us. Uh, but here uh, at this bunker, you can see it's sustained some heavy damage from one of the U.S. Um, naval battleships on D-Day. Took a big chunk out of the corner here. Uh, something else that's interesting to me about this bunker is, is that you can see kind of a different construction than from other bunkers. This one has more of a block construction rather than poured concrete. So it's, it's not as high quality as some of the other bunkers along the Atlantic Wall. Now, in May of 1944, there was a big bombing raid that took place here on Point du Hawk, and it left this area just completely cratered and looking like a, a moonscape. Uh, there's a, another bunker right there, kind of with that block construction. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the Germans ended up taking the guns that were here at Point du Hoc and pulling them back. This is a, a very exposed position. So when uh, Rudder's Rangers would have got up here on June the 6th, well, there weren't any guns, but there were a lot of these craters which German infantry could use as uh, like sniper positions. The Americans who fought here that morning New word of the invasion was spreading through the darkness back home. They fought or felt in their hearts, though they couldn't know in fact, that in Georgia, they were filling the churches at 4 a.m. In Kansas, they were kneeling on their porches and praying. And in Philadelphia, they were ringing the Liberty Bell. Something else helped the men of D-Day. 
their rock-hard belief that providence would have a great hand in the events that would unfold here, that God was an ally in this great cause. And so the night before the invasion, when Colonel Wolverton asked his parachute troops to kneel with him in prayer, he told them, do not bow your heads, but look up so you can see God and ask his blessing in what we are about to do. Also that night, General Matthew Ridgway on his cot, listening in the darkness for the promise God made to Joshua, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. All right, now we just got over here to the observation bunker at Point du Hoc, uh, which is also where they have the Ranger Monument. Now, in addition to the World War II history, uh, this is also where one of my favorite speeches of all time was given. On the 40th anniversary, Ronald Reagan was here and gave his Boys of Point du Hoc speech. Uh, but we have a, an artifact that we've brought from the Gettysburg Museum of History uh, that ties to a guy who was right here on June 6th. I'm on top of Point du Hoc at the Spear. And I have with me the Purple Heart of Madison Cobb, who was in the Second Rangers. He was severely wounded on June 6, 1944, while they were landing below us here at the point. When he got off the landing craft, he made several trips back and forth to the edge of the cliff, carrying boxes of ammunition and grenades. On his fourth or fifth trip, he was hit by an MG-42 and he was, his wounds were on his arm and his chest and he was severely wounded. He was taken back to the landing craft and evacuated to England. And he never made it to the top of the point as some of his comrades did. So I wanted to bring his Purple Heart back here today. Today, Madison Cobb made it to the top of the point. We're bound today by what bound us 40 years ago, the same loyalties, traditions, and beliefs. Here in this place, where the West held together, let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Let our actions say to them the words for which Matthew Ridgway listened, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Strengthened by their courage, heartened by their value, and borne by their memory, let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. <laughs>